and behold, there talk with him two men. Really? Jesus went to pray and now he's having a discussion with two men. Who are these two men? Which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Wow. This is the same Moses and the same Elijah that that missed the mark that God dealt with. But here they are speaking with Jesus on the mount. Eat up Mondays. Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Listen, before I jump into this meal, I just want to say to you guys, I've been having a great time the last couple of weeks just having this discussion. You know, we dealt two weeks ago dealing with frustration and how we handle frustration, the way we lash out and act out. And we learn those lessons from our brother Moses. And then last week we dealt with Elijah when discouragement hit your life, when fear hit your life. And we've been getting a lot of reaction to it. You know, a lot of testimony, people commenting, people identifying with it, people being honest about this is where they are at, you know, at some point in their life, they're even, they're either dealing with what Moses dealt with or what Elijah dealt with or with what both of them dealt with. So I just want to say, I appreciate you guys tuning in, locking in, you know, being a part of what it is that we're doing here, meaning just engaging, right? Because that's what this is all about. It's not so much about monologue, but it's about dialogue, right? We want to be able to kick it back and forth, feed off one another, encourage one another. So with that being said, we're going to talk a little bit about these two brothers just to close out both of those Eat Up Mondays. So without further ado, guys, you guys are hungry. I am hungry. So let's dig in. Once again, we've learned a lot from our brother Moses and a lot from our brother Elijah. And one of the main things we learn as we study both of their situations is that God has no respect to persons, right? When God tells us to do something, he told Moses to do something. That's exactly what he means. He says, listen, when I say do this, that's what I mean. I want you to follow it to a T. And if you don't, there's going to be consequences to those actions. When it comes to brother Elijah, when he was in the cave, and I'm going to put both of these eat up Mondays as a link in the description where you can go check it out. But he said to Elijah, when he was hiding in the cave, when he had ran from Jezebel, he said, Elijah, what are you doing here? Why are you here? In other words, why are you somewhere where you're not supposed to be? Why are you out of my will? Why are you hiding in this cave after such a victory, after I showed you that I'm working on your behalf? And you know that I'm working on your behalf because of the previous things you've seen in your life. So we learned so many lessons from both of them, but the main lesson we learned was that there's going to be consequences to our actions. And we know with Elijah, you know, the Lord told him, go and anoint Elijah, Elisha in your room, right? It's time for him to take your place and it's time for you to come on home. But I wanted to read something out of the New Testament dealing with both of them just to show us even more about their lives and also about our Lord and Savior and how he deals with us and his grace and his mercy. Luke chapter nine, verses 28 through 36 reads as follows. And it came to pass about in eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John talking about Jesus. He took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. So it says that his his clothing that he was wearing was white and glistening. And behold, there talk with him two men. Really? Jesus went to pray and now he's having a discussion with two men. Who are these two men? Which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Wow. This is the same Moses and the same Elijah that, that missed the mark that God dealt with. But here they are speaking with Jesus on the mount. Listen to what it goes on to say. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. 
And when they were awake, they saw his glory. They, it seemed like Peter and them always sleeping, right? It seemed like they, you know, times that they should be praying. And I, and then I don't know what night of the hour or the day of the hour or the night, you know, what hour it was of the night. Maybe they had been on a long journey or whatever have you. But one thing we know about them is them brothers get their sleep on, right? But it says they were awake. They saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. So they wake up and they see this amazing sight. Verse 33, and it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be here? He said, is it good for us to be here? And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. So the, the, the father said, this is my beloved son, hear him, right? They got nervous. The cloud had came over. They entered into the cloud. And this was just the father confirming the son, confirming his word. And verse 36 goes on to say, and when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. And I just wanted to share, look at how Moses, Mr. Mark, look at how Elijah, Mr. Mark, but yet we still see where they were in glory. And not to say that when we saw the Mr. Mark and when we read their stories that we thought they went to hell or something like that, that's not the case. But just to show you one, God's grace and mercy, but also to show you two, that God doesn't play when it comes once again to when he's telling you to do something, when he wants you to be somewhere, there's going to be consequences. He chastised both of them. He dealt with both of them, but yet they still are here with Jesus on the Mount, still speaking with him about him going to die at Jerusalem. But I just think that's so powerful because, you know, it shows us that the calling that we have on our lives are great callings, no matter what it is that it is that God has called us to do. But the most important thing is, is as we are doing it, let's make sure we follow God and his instructions to a T. Am I saying that we're, we're going to be able to do that? I can't speak to that, right? Because, you know, sometimes we miss the mark, but is it possible? Yes. Is it possible for God to tell you to do something and you do exactly that? Yes. Because if we don't, there's going to be consequences to those, to, to that disobedience, right? And we talked about it in the last video. We talked about, sure, God is, is going to forgive you of anything. You can go pretty much anything. You can go before God and ask for forgiveness. But even though if God forgive you right there on the spot, there's still consequences to those actions. There's still going to be some type of uh, a harvest from the seed that you have planted from what it is that you have done. But it's just so beautiful to see Moses and Elijah here speaking with Jesus, even though they had messed up. And understand, this is not a message saying, oh, it's all right to mess up because you'll still be in glory with the Lord or you'll still, you know, be here or there. No, that's not what this Eat Up Mondays is, is about, but it's just showing you their journey, you know, and how God is so gracious and merciful, but also how he's a chastening God, right? How he will chastise us if we get out of line. Look at this, no matter how important we may feel to be in the body of Christ, because to see them, for them to be on the mountain, talking with Jesus, like that's powerful, right? Like it don't get any powerful than that. To know that Elijah was taken up and seen no more, right? That he didn't die, but he was taken up to the Lord. That is powerful. But yet, even though these men were great men of God, God still dealt with them. And that's a word for somebody like none of us are special. None of us are better than the others. But when we obey God and do what it is that he wants us to do, the things that he tells us to do, that's what God is pleased about. He's not pleased. He's not uh, concerned with your title or where you were born, how many ministries you got, how many this, how many that. No. Can you follow what it is that I told you to do? But I encourage you, go check out last week's uh, Eat Up Mondays about Elijah. Go check out the one from two weeks ago about Moses when he struck the rock. I think it'll be an encouragement to you. I will once again put those links down in the description. But listen, know that I love you guys. Know that I appreciate you guys. 
This is the hour and the time that we be transparent, that we hold ourselves accountable for our actions and be honest about our actions, because this is the only way we're going to get true deliverance. But know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.